afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. I'm Brooke. And we're here to talk to you today about concrete. More specifically, what are we doing? We are blocking out um, a one by one window on top of this concrete disc. <laughs> Cover the crack um, around it, but leave the one by one window open for wicking. We're going to apply some product to the top of it. And if you don't know what wicking is, we're doing a modification to ASTMC 1585 capillary absorption test, which is a seven day test where we're doing a, a weight gain, basically measuring the amount of water that's being drawn into the concrete. And we're focusing on a certain spot. And it's a test that we've come up with over the years to really, you know, like I said, it is a modification, but it's to test certain surface treatments. So it's something that we've been working on for a long time here. And it's a you know, ASTMC 1585 is an easy test to run, but this is what the end sample looks like, where we're testing just the migration of water into this small window and, you know, uh, not measuring or, or not taking into account what's going on outside of that window by covering it with a marine grade epoxy. So Brooke is going to be doing that today, and Brooke, do you want to just take us through that process? Wow. We took eight samples and I, I cut in a little bit here to a cracking path. I don't know. To yeah, yeah, to elongate a cracking path to create a, a manufactured crack right. on either end. So we um, slowly applied pressure until that crack happened. And hold on a second, we've got live footage. Ding! We applied a longitudinal compressive, uh, compressive force mm -hmm. on either side, and that's what you're seeing here. We did it with these steel plates. And we did it about four to six pounds per second until it cracked. And once we saw that crack prat pattern, yeah. we stopped the test. Yep. So that's what we did for this sample. We got a beautiful crack, um, kept everything intact here. And then we're going to take the epoxy, keep this one inch window free of anything of epoxy all the way through. So it'll be pillar, if you will, or column of, column. of epoxy free. And then um, we'll cover the rest of it with epoxy so that we have uh, our baseline yeah. with the concrete and then we'll be able to see how that um, applied yeah. product works. And basically what we're doing is doing a comparison of A to B, right. reference to an experimental. So this is not to simulate on the job concrete or an on the job concrete you know, environment. This is strictly for primary and secondary capillary absorption. And it's an A to B comparison and it's great easy test to uh, run concurrently with other tests, other absorption tests. Uh, it's fun to do too. I know I have a great so time. So much fun. So much fun. <laughs> and it gives us great information on how either surface treatment pro products work or products that uh, engage after the concrete that has gone through a fatigue mechanism like cracking. So yeah, awesome test. We have um, eight samples that we did a crack all the way through. We have eight samples of fatigue, yeah, where we um, when, what, how many rounds did we go with that? So anytime we do fatigue, we do 15 rounds. Uh, this was a little bit different because it was a little bit smaller of a sample, so we went 10 rounds. 10, that's right. um, and we, we mimic ASTMC um, 469 or 496, which is the modulus elasticity test where you uh, bring your specimen up to 40% of its ultimate failure load. So we failed samples to begin with, and then we created that, that fatigue scenario. Right. So creating cracks that you can't see. And then we have a virgin sample that hasn't been, you know, hasn't had any stress on it whatsoever. So, yeah. Cool. Awesome. It'll be fun to see how it turns out. It's going to turn out awesome because we rock. What we're doing here first is squeezing out all part A and part B of our epoxy. I'm going to mix it up, make sure you're not putting any air bubbles in there, and then make sure you're scraping it up and really getting that part A and part B mixed up. You also want to look for if there's any uh, hardened uh, particles to it. Um, you might get some dry spots in there, which it rarely happens with this Loctite, Loctite marine epoxy. Uh, it's pretty good, but once in a while it's been known to happen, so just be aware of it. So what Brooke is doing now is just tracing out that window. Uh, and we're not even working on that on the first uh, round. Yeah, there's that window. What Brooke is doing here is creating that, that boundary condition where we're just focusing on what she used, which is a great way of saying it, Brooke, was that column. And it's, it's a, a meticulous process that you, 
you've got to be in love with the process. If you're not in love with the process, you're going to rush it and screw it up. Right, and you lose that consistency with that. So normally what we use to create a compression is a, a collar, mm -hmm. um, but we're going to be using here is uh, just some tape to create that compression to hold the pieces together. I did get the collars. Concerns. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ding that bell for notifications. Go concrete! Beat asphalt!